Cassidy welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here today I'm going to be filming a video that's a lot different than the ones I've done in the past but I'm going to be sharing five things I wish I knew when I started my fitness journey I posted a bunch of TikToks about this. They seem to do pretty well and you guys have asked to learn more. So I figured I'd make a whole YouTube video about it and really get into depth about everything and talk about it on like a micro level. Everything I'm sharing today is from my own personal experience. And I would never share with you like a claim if I didn't do extensive research on it because I know how misleading the media can be. So throughout the video and in the description, I will share all of my cited sources. When I first started my fitness journey, I was so confused because there's literally so much information out there, whether it's good or bad, it's super overwhelming. I've tried all the fad diets. There's just so many things out there that are so toxic, it should be illegal. Like, I hope I can share my knowledge with you so you don't make the same mistakes that I did because I've done them all. Number one, weights do not make you bulk. I promise. For the longest time, I would not pick up a weight because I thought it would make me bulk. And when I finally got my body to a point where I was happy with, the last thing I wanted to do was bulk up. After I got past my insecurities and did research, I realized that weights aren't the thing that make you bulk. Women have higher levels of estrogen and progesterone and lower levels of testosterone than men. Because of our genetic makeup, a woman cannot grow a new muscle tissue to the same degree as a man can. The women that you see in your everyday life or on social media that are bulky, it has probably taken them months, if not years, to get to that point. And they look like that by design because you have to follow a very strict regimen in your diet, workout, and lifestyle to achieve that goal. You can gain or lose weight in weight training. It all comes down to how you utilize it. My nerdy side has come out. I printed out like all of my research so I could share everything with you directly and according to a UNSW study in sports medicine, a systematic review and meta-analysis that reviewed and analyzed existing evidence shows we can lose around 1.4% of our entire body fat through strength training alone. Speaking generally, all workouts boost your metabolism, but the thing with weight training is your body is still burning calories even after you work out as it returns to its normal resting state. And it really all comes down to your diet. Like a slight calorie deficit combined with weight training can help you shed off the fat and maintain muscle. Whereas going in a calorie surplus in weight training can help you bulk or gain muscle in a different way. Diet is literally everything. I'm not exaggerating when I tell you the first six months that I started working out, I was barely seeing like any progress because my diet was just like crap. Because I didn't know like what I should be eating, how much, or anything about diet. Protein plays like a huge, huge factor in this as well. Two weeks. I am so serious when I tell you, two weeks after I started like increasing my protein, I saw so much progress. I'll show you before and after. 90% of your results will come from your diet and 10% will come from working out. And I'm saying this like, I'm so serious. Speaking of protein, I am so excited that I've had the opportunity to partner with Gainful, which is literally my favorite protein brand. When I tell you, I am so picky when it comes to my protein. A lot of proteins out there on the market are like so high in fat, so high in sugar, so high in calories, and just have so many unnecessary ingredients. The fact that I can recognize all the ingredients is everything. Organic pea protein, organic brown rice protein, and green tea extract. Trust me when I tell you this protein is incredible. I don't know why, but it makes me feel so special when stuff like has my name on it or I can customize it. And as you can see, this says Cassidy because it was personalized just for me. I don't have a lot of food allergies, but I do have a lot of dietary preferences. So to get your personalized protein, you go on their website and take a little quiz that asks you about your dietary preferences, any allergies, and your overall fitness goals. And then they make like a custom little formula for you, which is so cute and it actually tastes good. The way it works is really cool. So they send you like a non-flavored protein and then you can like pick out your flavor shots. I don't know what they're called. Like I call them flavor shots. I got the variety pack so I can try all of them. 
I would show you them, but I literally ran out because I'm so obsessed with them. My new shipment is coming in tomorrow. My personal favorite is chocolate peanut butter. And I also love matcha. You guys know, like, I'm a huge green tea fan. It's so good. I know a lot of people are like, Oh, if I see games, I don't care, like, if it tastes like crap. But I care. Like, I want my protein shake tasting like a dessert. So, so if you guys are looking for a protein, I definitely recommend Gainful. You know I gotta share my facts. According to a study, potential muscle-related... <laughs> Over the past decade, the potential muscle-related benefits achieved by consuming higher-protein diets have become increasingly clear. Increased protein intake contributes to greater strength and muscle mass, allows for greater muscle mass preservation when consumed during periods of negative energy balance, calorie deficit, limits age-related muscle loss, and to a lesser extent, provides a greater muscle protein synthetic response when evenly distributed across meals. So, there you have it. Protein is key. Mm, I have an itchy. Ooh, it's golden hour. Number three is you can't target fat loss. Everything I talk about today in the video, like I'm guilty of believing at some point. There's so many clickbaity videos out there, like workouts to lose weight in your inner thighs or workouts to get rid of belly fat. All those things like... <laughs> It's a pretty clever marketing tactic. It convinced me and convinces a lot of people, but it's just not true. You can target like different muscle groups if you wanna grow your butt or your arms, things like that, but you can't target like specific areas to lose fat. There are a number of reasons we tend to hold fat in specific areas on our body, and it's all based on genetics, lifestyle factors, stress. Another thing to note is a lot of times people get confused with weight gain and holding extra water. Because if you follow like a high sodium diet or had a weekend of like drinking or not really eating the best foods, you're going to retain a lot of water. That's just temporary. And as weird as it sounds, drinking water actually helps flush like the water out. It's hard to explain, but like, I promise it's true. And if you see those videos like, oh, seeing how much weight I gained on Christmas or on Thanksgiving day and the weight on the scale is higher, it's 99.9% .9 just because they're holding extra water because of that. It's very, very difficult. I would say impossible, but after 2020, like anything's possible. But it's very difficult to gain weight in one day. That brings us to our next point. Do not buy a scale. I don't have a scale in my house. If you have one, literally like burn it or throw it out because it's just not good for your well-being and not at all a representation of your progress. There are so many reasons like you could be a different weight tomorrow than you are today. If you're holding extra water, the time of day it is, what part of your menstrual cycle you're in, a common scenario that happens is people start working out and they look slimmer and they look more toned. They step on the scale and their weight's higher. That's because muscle weighs more than fat. So it really doesn't give you like an accurate depiction of like you. What I recommend doing is progress pics. I didn't do it because I was feeling insecure. I'm like, oh, I don't want to look at myself now. Like it's so embarrassing. I don't like how I look. But I promise you, progress pics really give you a good representation of where you are on your journey. Also, I feel like when you're looking at yourself in the mirror every day, you can't like really tell if you're making any progress because like you're used to seeing yourself every day. But if you look at a picture from last week versus now, you can put them like next to each other and really see if you've made any progress. That's just my two cents. Last but not least, I want to talk about a method that has helped me so much. That method is called progressive overload. I always saw like stuff on the media and things saying like, you always have to confuse your muscles, switch up your workouts. Every week I'd be like looking for a new workout. Thankfully, it's actually more beneficial to stick to the same workout regimen for four to six weeks or really until you stop seeing results. A good way to do this is through the method progressive overload. A lot of you guys who recently subscribed to me have also joined my fitness plan and as you can see it's the same workouts every week but I encourage you to add more resistance add more weight or do more reps because that's where you're gonna see the gains the Sun I'm just fully embracing it by definition progressive overload is the systematic increase in training frequency volume and intensity in various combinations over time it requires you to regularly escalate the challenge to your muscles some ways to do this are doing more reps or sets increasing time under tension increasing weight, increasing volume, and so on. The way that's worked best for me is every week introducing 
a little more resistance or a little more weight. Let's say you start just doing body weight exercises. Maybe a week or two after that, you introduce ankle weights, resistance bands, weights, heavier weights. Once I started doing that, I was really able to see results. I personally follow my own fitness plan and use that same strategy and have seen great results from it. And it definitely makes life easier not having to find new workouts to do every week. I could literally go on about everything forever, but I have a short attention span and could probably only get through like a 10 to 15 minute video myself. So I don't expect you to stick here for too long. Maybe I'll do a part two. Let me know if you guys want to see that. Hopefully I gave you some helpful tips or advice. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more.